This is a Crux 35 airframe from Happy Model. There's a lot to like about this airframe and a couple of things not to like too. I've decided to dedicate a couple of videos to actually taking a deep dive into this airframe and looking at the possibilities and how much performance we can actually squeeze out of it. In this video I'm going to take you through an overview of the airframe and in the next couple of videos I'm going to take you through two scratch builds. The first one is this one here with a naked Vista unit and an all-in-one 35 amp flight controller. And another one which is a more simplified build with the same all-in-one flight controller and an encased Vista unit like this. So first let's take a quick look at the airframe itself. Now this airframe is available on many websites, uh, for example GetFPV here has it for $19 which is not too bad for an airframe like this and also backordered as is everything these days, what do you do eh? In the bag you get various parts, we'll take a look at those. So here are all the parts, this is the base frame of course and you've got your side plates and top plate. Uh, three different sorts of uh, TPU mounts, this one here is for an SMO4K. Uh, but you can actually use it for an Insta360 as well. Uh, various assortment of screws and, and bolts here. Uh, these ones here have actually got chisel head. I'm not sure why they give you chisel head screws for the frame. You need cap head ones, but anyway. Uh, M2 nuts, plastic ones, throw them away and get steel ones. These are M4 hex spacers, plastic uh, nylon again, once again. And some random gummies here and also some other screws. It's, it's all the hardware is uh, M2, so it's two millimeter. And of course your battery strap up there. And that's what you get in the kit. So one thing I'd like to look at is the TPU mounts. It's great that they give you all these TPU mounts, but a little bit disappointing the way that you have to attach them to the frame. So if we have a look here, you can see that the TPU mounts for the SMO4K TPU mount and the antenna here, they actually go down into the standoffs. And the problem here is when you tighten these down, you can never actually get the bolt tight. As much as you tighten it, it's actually just going to pull the head straight down through that TPU mount and it's just going to split the TPU mount. So what I've done here, if I zoom in a bit, you can see that I'm actually using an M2 washer here just to spread the, the force over a greater area. And that just allows me to tighten those bolts down a little bit, a little bit tighter, uh, but still not really as much as what I'd like. Now I guess the only saving grace here is the fact that they've actually got the these four holes here in the top plate and these allow your stack screws to come all the way through and you can actually cap that off with a nut on top there and that adds a little bit more strength to the frame uh, and to actually support those where you've got the bolts going into the TPU mounts. We'll just have a look at that in the real world situation over here. So here we go, these are still holding on quite tight but I've actually put my my stack mounts all the way through the top plate and the nut on top there. Uh, by the way, if you're going to do this, you're going to need 30 millimeter bolts. So these are 30 millimeter M2 bolts. So it should be about 31.5 or so in total length. Uh, that's including the, the top there, 1.5. And so 30 millimeters for the shaft. And that will allow them to come through just enough about about two millimeters through the top here just enough to fit an m2 bolt on it's a little bit disappointing but there's no battery mount included there's no battery rubber included in the kit and you can see on the bottom here where you mount the battery you've got eight bolts coming through there eight bolt heads it'd be really nice if they included some sort of custom cut battery mount and uh, but that unfortunately that's not in the kit but of course you need some sort of rubber or something to mount the battery on the bottom there so I ended up just uh, designing one myself and cutting it out myself and sticking it on. If we look at the size of the frame, okay, all of the base, the base plate is actually 3.5 millimeters. There, we've got two millimeters for the top plate. Okay, two millimeters for the top plate and the side plates for the camera also come in at two millimeters as well. So all in all, a uh, solid frame and really good to see they're having the actually using uh, three millimeters for the base plate. Looking down on top here, you can see how short the body is. Gives a really compact center of mass. I'll just swap it out for the built one here. And you can see how, how compact and tight that, that build really is. 
and it keeps all of the mass very centralized in the in the middle of the frame there if we turn it this way we can see that it is actually a true x design okay there we go you can see the 90 degree angle between the arms so we've got a true x uh, freestyle design frame here uh, but actually when you when you fit it all out uh, i'll bring in this one again okay so you can see the camera is back here and props are definitely in view so you, you're going to get that racing style props in view uh, when you're actually flying it but it is actually a true x design so a freestyle frame one sticking point for me is the motor mount holes these are a nine millimeter pattern and that's a, a little bit disappointing because most most frames these days are having the elongated holes which take nine millimeters all the way up to 12 millimeters i mean not all 1404 motors have a nine millimeter mounting pattern and this frame is actually designed well it's it's uh, marketed with 1404 motors so it's a bit disappointing to see that they've got the only the nine by nine mounting pattern for the motor holes there looking in the mounting holes we've got a 20 by 20 mounting pattern for your stack and they've also got 25 by 25 mounting holes and we can see here the i've actually got the, the bolts in for the 20 by 20. this is the 25 by 25 out here now normally the 25 by 25 would would go at 45 degrees uh, but on this frame they've actually made it square on like this so it's it's not a deal breaker but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to mount the 25 by 25 flight controller and your wires will have to come one set of wires will come to the side and the other set of wires one to the side and the other set of wires will come around the front and on the other side to the back of the flight controller so a little bit difficult but it's not a deal breaker there now for flight controllers any 25 by 25 mount flight controller will fit quite easily in this in this quad you can see the standoffs are actually quite close together but the 25 by 25 will be fine unfortunately most 25 by 25s flight controllers don't have up to 30 or 35 amp escs and that's why i usually go for this one and if you're looking at a 20 by 20 mount this jei mcu board is actually the only one that's going to fit in this drone uh, with one condition and i'll just show you here okay and that is you can't actually mount it backwards you need to rotate it 180 degrees because the the distance from here to there and here to there is different to make it fit in between the standoffs you need to mount the board backwards and of course that just means you have to rotate at 180 degrees and be the flight when you do your setup and you also have to remap your motor outputs i'll put a link down in the description for this actual flight controller as well as a link to a video showing you how to remap, remap motor outputs well if we take a look at the frame weight we can see that the whole frame comes in at 26 grams which is not too bad but overall i definitely like this frame uh, the good definitely outweighs the bad and in the next video we're going to look at doing two builds this one here and i'm going to step you through the process of the build as well as another build a more simplified version and we'll get it in the air and do some test flights